Hello students, in this video we'll discuss summation by parts. Let me be given two sequences. First sequence is going to be AK. K goes from 1 to infinity. And BK. K goes from 1 to infinity. And let M be bigger than 1 and less than N be any two natural numbers. And consider the following sum. We're going to consider the sum. K goes from M up to N of A, K, B, K. And I want to develop some tool that's for finite sums that's similar to integration by parts. And we do that in the following way. We consider, we let, let S, N be A1 all the way up to A, N, the nth partial sum. of the an, okay? And we can notice there that for any n bigger than one, sn minus one, if I subtract off sn from sn minus one, what I get is I get an for n bigger than or equal to one. This is true for n bigger than or equal to one, provided, of course, when I plug in n equals one to this, and again, s zero, provided we define s zero to be zero. So we want s zero to be zero over here, okay, good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to basically try to integrate by parts. And by doing so, what do I mean by that? I mean, we're going to take our sum over here. And our sum, the sum k goes from m up to n of a k b k is equal to what? Is equal to the sum k goes from m up to n of a k, which I know now to be s k minus s k minus 1 b k like that, okay? Good, now we're gonna break this into two sums. K goes from n to n of s k b k minus the sum k goes from m up to n of s k minus one b k. Now what I'm gonna do on that second sum is gonna shift the indices, okay? So let's shift the indices so over here, we're going to shift the indices by, we're going to shift indices down on the sum and up on the terms. Okay, that's the next thing we're going to do. Let's do that. And what we get, I'm going to leave the first term the same. It's going to be the sum k goes from m up to n of sk bk. And then minus the sum k goes from m minus 1 up to n minus 1, just a pure shift, then I'm going to have an s k, because now I've shifted, the, I've shifted these down by 1, I'm going to shift these up by 1, then a b k plus 1. Now what I'd like to do is I, th I would like to combine these sums over here, but they go over different index ranges over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is equal to, leave the first term the same, k goes from m up to n of s k bk. Great. And then I'm going to write the second sum as what? As the sum, I'm going to add and subtract terms. I'm going to write this as k goes from m, so now I start at m, so I forgot about what? I forgot about the negative m minus 1 term over here. Going from m up to what? Up to n minus 1, n. Okay, so I've added in an extra negative, and we'll have to, we'll have to balance that out. S k bk plus 1. Great. And now what happened over here? So I had a minus, and so I threw in an extra negative. I threw in the, one more term on top, which was negative, which wasn't there to start, right? So I have an extra negative over here, so I have to add that back in. I have to add in what? I have to add in the term, which is, I have to add in S n b n plus 1. That term was at, that term now balances out the top term and gets back to n minus one, and then I had this minus m minus one over here, which I forgot about over here. So I have to subtract off s m minus one, s m right over here, s m minus one b m, and now we have our summation by parts formula. So therefore, our summation by parts formula is the following: I can group these two terms together. So we've just proven that the sum k goes from m up to n of a k b k is the sum 
k goes from m up to n of sk times the differential bk, sk, bk minus bk plus 1. And then this, these boundary terms over here, plus what? Plus s n b n plus 1 minus s m minus 1 b m. Again, with the convention that if I plugged in m equals 1, s 0 would be equal to 0. And this formula over here is known as summation by parts. This is called summation by parts. Summation by parts is very useful for proving convergence results about products of series. Things like where you might have like a negative one to the k over k, like an alternating series, or we might have a trigonometric series where you have like the sine of kx times a n. Trying to prove boundedness results for certain sequences together with the k estimates and other parts of the sequence allows you to determine convergence results for product series. Thank you very much.